sounds like and a lot of theatrical experience goes on, but uh, most people here, I guess we're about mixed, half have theater background and half don't. Um, I don't know if anybody wanted to talk about, is it interesting to get to be an actor and not get paid for it and whether you've had that experience <laughs> before or not? I never thought I'd get to be Queen of England. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> After the week one was, was over, I was kind of upset that everybody wasn't rising as I walked into a room. <laughs> I, I uh, of course, was in a lot of theater when I was in college, and um, that's nothing. You memorize your lines, you move where you want to go. It's a whole other ball game where you have to actually become someone for however long it is. And if you become the character intensely enough, it's can be very hard to stop sometimes for a while. It just take you a couple of days to recover from it and stop talking in a silly accent. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I found, uh, given that comparison, is that theater is work, whereas, and that's why you should be paid for it, but uh, live action role playing uh, can constitute a uh, um, thing leading to, to peak experiences, which is why we pay for it. That uh, um, we uh, that there is no dividing line between the um, the audience and and the performers. They're they're the same, and there's no script. We are writing it every second that it, it goes on, and that's why it's interactive literature. But, mm. A number of people here have been very interested in the costuming aspect and if you'd like to talk about that that's really the reason that I game the first couple of games it was a lot of fun to do the game and after that I realized that if I picked my games carefully enough I could wear all the clothes that I'd always dreamed of wearing but you can't wear in the late 20th century because people would laugh at you in a game they don't laugh at you they come up to you and say that's a great dress how did you do that and uh, it's just a thrill all around. And then you go back to work and you put on your drab old office clothes and you show people the photos and they're like, you can do that? <laughs> Besides being fun, I think also that gaming has a wonderful therapeutic quality. Um, you're in work all day and, and you've got all these tensions and everything and you can't quite walk up to somebody and tell them off the way you'd like to for fear of losing your job. And, when you get into a game, you know, you can scream at people and they'll listen to you and <laughs> do what you say. Okay. Uh, now we're going to do our demonstration. Uh, our players are dressed for a, a game called Lone Star, which was set in the Wild West in a town in Texas. Uh, our players have already been given a synopsis of their characters and have had a chance to look over them. Otherwise, all you'd see for the first few minutes was everyone sitting around and reading. Um, but other than that, this will, what you'll see is pretty much what goes on. My husband gave it a sun doll yesterday. Don't talk much about my folks. I've been just off you before. And he died in a blizzard a couple of years back. Well, that's rough. He died. Well, you know, at least didn't it disinherit him? Not like that's likely to happen with your mom. No. I don't know. I mean, sometimes it was a lot like a little less. She's got this fool idea of sending me out east to go to school. Out Can you east? believe that? Can you see me out east? No. I come from the mine. I mean, there's no place to put me in. Three? 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 Yeah. Three? Three? Two? Three? Three? There you go. All right. I'll two. Well, it might be equitable. Get into an arrangement. Of course. That could be easily done. Um, the mineral rights do not disturb anything to do with the uh, grazing of the stock. And in general, give a better overall flow to the economy of the region. Uh, Mr. Pettibone, I know a number of the farmers are very concerned. They want to ensure that they'll have rights to uh, fence in their own lands. What are some of your concerns? Well, I've got several concerns. Currently, there is a bit of bad blood going on between farmers and ranchers in general mm -hmm. that's led to some trouble and I uh, believe there have been some shootings. With that man shot, gut shot my husband yesterday and I expect you to do something about it. Sir? Is that true? Kid. I say I did no such thing of sort. Well you may think you're safe because you may have thought that my husband died but he didn't. What? Where, where is that? Well, I, 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 
I should take a look at it. He's back at the farmhouse, and you're not getting anywhere near it. You pathetic old drunk. Now, now just a minute. At your homestead, that's your... We may not have a sheriff, but you were a deputy. You were once. What are you going to do? Shoot a man in cold blood on your mama's accusations? Not by mama. Why, <laughs> his mother? I'm sorry, I'm new to this town. <laughs> I can gather. I just have to ask you to step into the cell until we have a chance to check out the story. Nothing personal, mind. I think maybe we should step outside and settle this, sir. Sure you want to get into this? I think sure you know what you're doing? I think I do. All right. I don't see if there's anything to settle since the man's not dead. Who's the biggest rancher in this area? Now, ma'am, just because... Who said there'd be no barbed wire anywhere in his state? Now, just because that man is currently in my employ does not mean that I have constant oversight of his behavior at all times. I am a civilized man, I want to Well, uh, we'll try and wrap up a little bit, tell you uh, a little bit about what was going on there. We had uh, the characters uh, in, that, uh, in that scenario who had some interconnections set up for them, and you saw some of those developing. Right, so what we saw here was a small slice of a life in a town in northwest Texas in the late 1880s. Uh, these were just seven characters out of an event that had over 60 uh, in it. All these people were in the town. Most of them were townspeople. Uh, one of them, as uh, you saw, said he was new to the town, and that always is a source of conflict in that kind of situation. Um, as you can see, there were different things that people were trying to do. And I know you were very concerned because your husband had been shot. And I was absolutely convinced that it was the rancher who had ordered it because we had just put barbed wire up around the farm. Well, I would, would like to assure you that I didn't specifically order him to be shot. I approved of it, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was my idea to shoot your husband, um, and in fact, I was the one who did it. But <laughs> not, not on his orders, just at his suggestion. You live through the gunfight, you'll get a promotion for showing initiative. Oh, thank you. Now, something we didn't see is how the gun combat would be done, and there are different mechanics that can be done for that, but that's not as important as the talking and interacting between the players. There's always more than one thing going on at any time. Uh, some of the actions are conflicts between different characters, and some of them are just action within one character's personality, like the doctor, for example. Yeah, who was uh, a drunkard and fairly incompetent, and people tended to die uh, while he was working on them. And so people didn't have a great deal of confidence in him. On the other hand, it was all they had. And also, it, it shows how, um, I wouldn't even call it a mistake, but the one character who was from out of town uh, thought that Sherry, thought that the madam of the brothel or was uh, Robert Jr.'s uh, mom, and it's the sort of thing of, that's not a mistake, because in character, he wouldn't know that, and that's fine, and you find out things in game, and you keep going. I mean, that's how you're going to find out and learn what's happening in a game is by talking to other people. And yes, you'll make mistakes, but nobody's going to make fun of you for guessing wrong. Uh, the kid was another uh, one who had concerns of his own and got caught up in other people's events. Well, yes, there, there was a, a couple of, of subplots that were, that were just going on behind his mind. Uh, that he had lost his lucky piece and uh, that uh, something he was looking for, but he didn't want to tell anybody about it because he was embarrassed. Uh, but the, the bit about uh, w not wanting my mom to send me away to college, I sort of made up from overhearing something that she was saying and uh, some indications in the character sheet. But. There were some other things going on with other people. For example, Sherry at the bar. Well, I think I decided that it might be best to marry the kid since I discovered a silver mine under the saloon, and it was the best way to keep it without having to give it to his mom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for participating in this event, and I hope this gives an example of uh, what interactive literature, interactive theater is like, and uh, look for it at a convention or somewhere else near you. So, tell us what else was well, anything. Well, it was, uh, uh, was really bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 it was awful. In the studio well, situation, I the, the curtain nice there, we kept yeah. running into it and my, my mouth It's a different really situation really than in a game. Oh, yeah. 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 That's, I figured you couldn't duel. You'd have to go home. I think we should have more 10-minute games. Yeah, normally it's a dance.